Welcome to this video about service of the Danfoss SVA140B shutoff valve. In this video, we'll give you some tips how to do an efficient service of the SVA140B shutoff valve, which you see here, to ensure safe and reliable valve operation and minimum service costs. Therefore, we will show you how to correctly isolate the valve from the system and drain it before service, how to correctly backseat the valve if needed, how to correctly pressure equalize and adjust the packing gland if needed, how to correctly replace the valve top module if needed. We will also show you how to correctly replace the flat gasket if needed, how to correctly replace the cone sealing if needed, how to correctly replace the EPDM backup O-ring if needed. And finally, how to correctly recharge the valve and connect it to the system. Before servicing the SVA140B shutoff valve, it is very important to do the following steps. Isolate the valve from the system. If CO2 liquid is present, then if possible, drain all CO2 in liquid phase from the lowest point in the system to minimize dry ice formation. Check and ensure that there is no refrigerant pressure before disassembly of the valve. The SVA140B shutoff valve is identified by the green color and the valve is available with angleway or straightway valve housing as seen here. The valve comes with butt weld or bracing connections. In this video we demonstrate the service of the straightway valve, but the service procedure is the same for all valve variants. The service of the valve is done with the valve located on a workbench, as seen here, but the procedures of valve disassembly, valve parts replacement and valve reassembly are the same for the valve located in a refrigeration system. Here you see the tools needed for the service of the SVA140B shutoff valve. This includes spanner, torque wrenches, allen key, screwdriver. So let us get started with the valve service. Please observe the following important handling of the SVA140B packing gland. You cannot replace the packing gland during service. Instead, replace the complete top module if needed. Do not loosen the packing gland to make the spindle movement easier if there is internal pressure in the valve. Backseat the valve and, if needed, pressure equalize the packing gland by carefully loosening the packing gland. Before disassembling the SVA140B shutoff valve, we recommend to backseat the valve to release the cone pressure acting on the valve housing seat. This will make it easier to loosen and remove the bonnet bolts and remove the top module from the valve housing. Therefore, firstly, loosen and remove the cap. Then rotate the spindle counterclockwise to lift the cone from the seat. Keep rotating the spindle until the valve is fully open and tighten the spindle with the torque specified here. In some cases, pressure forms and is trapped behind the packing gland of the SVA140B valve. This pressure can be equalized by slowly loosening the packing gland. Therefore, carefully rotate the packing gland counterclockwise until possible trapped pressure is released through the packing gland, as seen here. Then carefully rotate the packing gland clockwise until it is fully tight. Please note that tightening the packing gland too much will lead to excessive wear of the packing gland and shorten the lifetime and will make the spindle movement tighter. To remove the SVA140B top module, firstly loosen the bonnet bolts. Remove two of the bolts, leaving two bolts partly fixed to the valve housing as a safety measure should there by accident still be refreshment pressure inside the valve. Carefully loosen the top module slightly from the valve housing, ensuring that there is no refrigerant pressure inside the valve. Then remove the remaining two bolts. Finally, carefully lift and remove the top module from the valve housing. Please note that if the flat gasket for the top module is damaged, then carefully remove it from its location. The gasket might stick to either the top module or to the valve housing, so be careful doing gasket removal not to scratch the surfaces of these parts where the gasket sticks to. To remove the cone sealing, firstly loosen and remove the cone screws.
Then remove the cone and the cone ceiling. Finally carefully remove the o-ring cone ceiling. Be careful not to scratch the o-ring groove in the piston. Please note that replacement of the backup o-ring might be needed every second year if operating the valve constantly close to the limit of plus 150 degrees centigrade. To do this, rotate the spindle clockwise and stop when the backup o-ring becomes visible. Carefully remove the o-ring. Be careful not to scratch the o-ring groove. Do not remove or surface the dark colored grease between the spindle thread and the bonnet. You can use different available service kits to replace one valve parts during reassembly of the SVA140B shutoff valve. Here you see the available service kits for SVA140B. These are the inspection kit, which includes different gasket and sealing parts to disassemble and inspect the valve. The repair kit, which includes gaskets, sealings and cone replacement parts. This allows servicing the cone and seating and can expand the lifetime of the valve. The overall kit, which is the complete top function module and which replaces all parts except the valve housing, allowing full valve service without cutting the pipes and without replacing the complete valve. So let us start the valve assembly using spare parts from these service kits. If the backup o-ring has been removed, then firstly clean the backup o-ring groove and make sure it is free from dirt and scratches. Then carefully mount the backup o-ring. Lubricate it with refrigerant grease so that it is not damaged during mounting. As mentioned earlier, do not remove or service the dark colored grease between the spindle thread and the bonnet. In case the grease has been contaminated with dirt, particles or water, then replace the complete top module. Rotate the spindle counterclockwise until the valve is in fully open position. Before mounting the cone ceiling, firstly clean the o-ring and the cone ceiling grooves. Carefully mount the o-ring cone ceiling. Then mount the cone ceiling and the cone. Mount the screws and tighten them with the torque specified here. Please note that if the flat gasket for the top module is damaged, then carefully mount a new gasket. Make sure that the surfaces where the gasket is located are clean and free from scratches. You do not need to lubricate the flat gasket before mounting it. We are now ready to mount the top module. Clean the valve housing and the top module. Carefully mount the top module onto the valve housing. Then mount the bonnet bolts and cross tighten them with the torque specified here. Never exceed this specified torque. After complete assembly of the SVA140B valve, we can now release the back seating. Therefore, rotate the spindle clockwise to lower the cone towards the seat. Keep rotating the spindle until the valve is fully closed. If needed, carefully rotate the packing gland clockwise until it is fully tight. Please note that tightening the packing gland too much will lead to excessive wear of the packing gland and shorten the lifetime and will make the spindle movement tighter. We are now ready to finalize the valve assembly by mounting the cap. Firstly, remember to mount 
the identification ring if removed during the valve disassembly. If needed, replace the cap sealing. Then carefully mount the cap and tighten it firmly so that it does not get loose. After completing the assembly of the SVA140B shutoff valve, ensure to do the following steps. Connect the valve to the system. Charge CO2 in gas phase to above 5.2 bar absolute pressure to prevent dry ice formation before charging CO2 liquid or equalizing with system pressure. Check and ensure that refrigerant pressure is equalized in the valve and system. You have now completed the service of the SVA140B shutoff valve, so now you know how to correctly isolate the valve from the system and drain it before service, correctly backseat the valve, correctly pressure equalize and adjust the packing gland, correctly replace the valve top module, correctly replace the flat gasket, correctly replace the cone ceiling, correctly replace the EPDM backup o-ring, and how to correctly recharge the valve and connect it to the system again. All this ensuring a safe and reliable valve operation with minimum service costs. Have a look at the other online learnings about Danfoss valves. Thanks for watching.